Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Yesterday we took another step towards science fiction when it was announced that the US Air Force Research Laboratory was going to start taking a serious look at suborbital transportation of materials, cargo, whatever, around the world using rockets, right? Uh, I mean, the official announcements are talking about the this being a vanguard program as part of their science and technology strategy for the next decade, and that Space Force would be the lead service for the program. And I, I'm not sh really sure what lead service means in this context, but I'm sure the concept of Space Force sending military assets around the world using rockets sounds a lot like science fiction. Well, at least sending military hardware in that manner without intending them to, well, explode on arrival. You know, ICBMs, right? Sci-fi has things like Starship Troopers dropping onto the battlefield in pods. And in the 1950s and 1960s, the idea of deploying troops via rocket was actually investigated broadly. And it produced like this marvellous concept art showing something that would make Starship look pretty small in comparison. But in this case, it's not about building anything new. The official wording uh, announcing the program specifically says that the Air Force Research Laboratory will lead a science and technology effort to determine the viability and utility of using existing large commercial rockets for the Department of Defense uh, Global Logistics. So look, this kind of restricts it to things that are already in existence. It's very likely just going to be a bunch of people sitting in a room and doing math and running simulations, playing Kerbal Space Program, and writing a report based on what's commercially available. And based on the current market, the only thing that seriously fits the bill is SpaceX's Starship, right? I mean, the concept art pretty much screams, make it not quite look like SpaceX. And the truth is, however, the Starship is not really an ideal design for many technical reasons, but we'll get back to that. Right now, the fastest way to move stuff around the world is probably uh, aircraft, things like the C-130 Hercules, the C-5 Galaxy. These are subsonic. They will take you know, a, a day to get around to the other side of the world with your precious cargo. But the US military already has assets, uh, you know, bases all over the world. And so if you've got something that's needed to be transported over that distance, it actually makes some sense to have you know, caches of this stuff at bases around the world. Uh, the nice thing about air transport is it is actually possible to airdrop some of these things into locations where it's needed and where the aircraft can't land. So my question is, uh, is there a real need for suborbital transport, which is, again, able to move stuff anywhere on the Earth in under an hour? And I'm very sceptical. I think the scenarios where it works are very narrow, but you know the US Department of Defense has deep pockets and might end up investing in something even if it never actually gets used. Suborbital transportation makes the transport very fast, but it still takes time to load and unload at each end. And the loading time, you also have to account for things like propellant loading time, which is non-trivial for a 5,000 ton rocket. You, you can't keep a cryogenically fueled Starship on the pad ready to go at a moment's notice. It takes about 30 minutes to fuel up the Falcon 9, and it will probably take longer to load up Starship with all its propellants. Now, it can be presumed that the massive extra resources needed for suborbital delivery will make it much more expensive than aircraft. Currently, the Falcon 9 rideshare program quotes costs of about $5,000 per kilogram. Now, the scale of something like Starship might reduce that to a fraction of this, but whatever, whatever you want to ship around the world, it will have to justify this cost of getting there a day before other supplies. And the good news, of course, on this is that the US military has lots of stuff that costs more than $5,000 per kilogram. So let's look at that glorious concept art again. It shows trucks driving away from a rocket with your know, red cross flag suggesting that this monster rocket dropped into some disaster zone with materials to help the locals get back on their feet. And you know, the US military is actually regularly involved in disaster relief operations. But if you're watching something like a hurricane or floods or bad weather, then the odds are the planners already have enough of a head start to be preparing for the recovery by moving materials closer to the place they'll be needed as soon as landing is possible, you know, assuming that someone competent is in charge. Earthquakes and tsunami, on the other hand, they don't have offer any warning. So sure, there might be some advantage in getting relief to some people 
hours afterwards uh, rather than days afterwards. But again, this is very much a niche application. The image also shows a rocket landed vertically. And this is what Starship intends to do, but it's not really a great option for loading and unloading. Starship has to land vertically because the engines are in the bottom and it uses the same engines for boosting into orbit and for landing back from space because you're trying to optimize for the mass. But let's be clear, the wording surrounding the program, it does give them flexibility to consider other options from other contractors who might, you know, want to throw their hat in the ring if they smell some DOD contract money. If you were wanting to build something more appropriate for landing in an unprepared area and offloading cargo, I, I still don't think that parachutes are going to be a viable option simply because we're talking something very large. But, you know, a redesigned rocket-based lander which puts the cargo closer to the ground would solve the massive problems of unloading cargo quickly from Starship after landing in a location, you know, which may not have any specialist cargo handling gear. I mean... On the other hand, Starship might work well if you're delivering cargo between US bases. But again, if you're delivering it between bases, you have to ask what kind of cargo is so valuable that it isn't just cheaper to have extra copies on hand at bases around the world. One item, actually, which can't be easily copied is people... You know, if there's some situation that requires a specific person or specific group of people to be on the ground in a specific place as soon as possible... Sure, this is something that might actually work, might offer an advantage. The 1960s concept art actually shows troops deploying via a giant inflatable slide, which seems suboptimal. After a rocket launch, hot re-entry and fiery landing, it would be unfortunate to injure yourself on a giant inflatable slide. The trajectory that a suborbital flight has to follow uh, means that there's no flexibility on routes. You have to follow a great circle, and that means the vehicle for certain destinations will override territories at an altitude that might would be considered in orbit. And this will probably lead to complaints from some, but there's basically very little that can be done to stop it unless a country wants to actually go to war and deploy anti-satellite things. Uh, launching suborbital military rockets as well to fly over somebody else's territory is also going to be a political minefield because of the problems, not, not just because it's like flying over other people's territory with military stuff, but hey, how do you know that that's not a nuclear missile strike incoming? The US actually has an ongoing project called Prompt Global uh, Response to deliver conventional weapons via something like an ICBM. And one of the major sticking points is the potential confusion and potential for retaliation if another nation suspects that a launch is nuclear. When the global policy on averting nuclear conflict is mutually assured destruction, there's not a huge room, amount of room for nuance in responses to launches in other territories. So look, I don't see this ever being deployed, at least not in the near term. Technologically, it's absolutely possible to build something that does this. Starship isn't quite right for the task, but if the DoD want it, I'm sure they could get something more in line with their needs. And there's a lot of defense contractors out there that would be more than happy to take the money for such a project. But I will say that I'd see suborbital transportation of military hardware as much more likely to happen than point-to-point -point civilian tra passenger transport, because you know, both actually have similar problems in terms of politics, but the military actually have the connections to help circumvent these problems. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.